some people are still asleep from yesterday night. Um, welcome to the first panel, which is um, hosted by Vimp, the streaming service. And very importantly, we have swapped the stages. There's a stage Fritz Lounge, which is downstairs. And everything that is supposed to happen in Fritz Lounge is now happening here in C2. And that will happen throughout the whole day. Um, so it's, Im it's an important switch. And I think you can check it online. They have announced it online, too. Um, the panel that we're hearing now, the discussion will be about sound quality. And uh, we will hear what two decades of MP3 and uh, cutting off the, the interesting edges of the sound spectrum has done to our ears and where it will go. And we will have uh, Paul, who I hand over to. He will moderate the panel and introduce the panelists. Uh, have fun. Well, good morning. It's fantastic that we can have this session with tremendously high quality headphones on. Uh. Um, well, I'm Paul. I work for WIMP, but I'm also a music producer and uh, mixer. And uh, I'm trying not to do mastering because uh, I'm not very good at it. But um, uh, yeah, so I, I work with, uh, with, with music, making music. And I also work with the streaming service. And uh, when I started working there, the first project we started doing was to get back to full CD quality. Uh, because I think it's important that uh, we share the music in the same quality it was made in the studio. So when Bissi is finished with his job, that you get to hear what he actually did and not some encoded uh, stuff afterwards. Um, still, though, quite pragmatic when it comes to sound. Um, uh, sometimes you are on a bad connection, so you can have a lesser quality. But uh, why not have the full quality now that we can? We are streaming Netflix in full HD on our tablets, and uh, it just doesn't make sense to live with a sound format that was created to be transferred over these clunky old modems that were standing in your corner going <laughs> um, MP3 was created for that, and there's no reason to keep it anymore, because we have enough data bandwidth. Um, but we're not going to go into and, and be extremely nerdy. We're not going to do a lot of uh, codec uh, analysis and stuff. We're going to speak about how people use music, because that's uh, interesting. And uh, I'm going to start asking the panel to introduce themselves by telling who they are. But also, where do they enjoy music the most, and how, and why? Uh, and to give you an example, uh, I'm Paul, and I'm... Uh, uh, my, I'm, I'm listening to music all day, but the place where I enjoy music the most is uh, in the car, when I'm alone in the car. That's the prime spot. I can put on whatever I want, and I can listen to a whole album in one go and check out new music uh, without anyone else interacting or talking or doing anything. So that's my prime spot of listening. And then that's the car system, but I also use headphones a lot. Uh, we are in a big headphone era, so, uh, so it's interesting. Oh, um, you, you listen to music all day, <laughs> uh, <Yes. laughs> uh, the same songs over and over again, uh, checking them out. But, uh, but where, where do you enjoy music the most? Actually, I enjoy the music most uh, in the morning in the bathroom. I have a little um, radio uh, with a mono speaker, so uh, where, the, where the truth is coming out, if somebody mixed it right. <laughs> um, no, but I'm, I really enjoy uh, listening to music actually also in my car. And um, it's like um, also when I'm when I'm done with the masses, um, I just enjoy it, car ride, driving to the city and listen to the masses. And um, yeah, this is how I listen to the music there. And to all of you, this is busy. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> okay, thank you. Yeah, my name is uh, Ronnie Krie Ronnie. My name is Ronnie Krieger. Uh, English or German? How do you prefer? Uh, I prefer. English. English, okay. Yeah. My name so is I Ronnie know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, that's great. My, my name is Ronnie Krieger, uh, and I've been working in various uh, forms in the music business in the last 20 years, uh, from record labels, distribution, download sites, consultant jobs, different things. And basically in the past 20 years, there hasn't been a single day where I haven't at least been on 10 music websites and blogs, checked for new music, checked artists. Uh, I read 
music magazines from all over the world. So I'm continuously for 20 years or more uh, on search for new types of artists, new music, and I listen to a lot of music. Uh, since I have two kids now, uh, the times are precious. I don't own a car, but I use public transportation. That's that and my daily exercise and sport are usually the times when I listen to music and discover music. Is, is it mostly albums or tr I se separate tracks? I only listen to albums. I've okay. never ever in my whole life bought a single. But do you, ever, do you find time enough to listen to whole albums? It depends. I mean, yeah. when you check out something, you don't need to listen to the whole album. Yeah. Uh, you know quite quickly if you're interested or not. And if I'm interested, I'm actually not uh, using uh, streaming on the road because I want full quality. Mm. And I tended to do that. And then after three days, my data volume was my uh, cell phone provider was used up. Mm. So I continuously had to buy additional uh, loads and, and, and I stopped doing that. And now what I do is when I do my research in the evenings at home, usually at night, uh, I save them for mobile use, download the files, mm. and then I can use them on the go. Yeah, yeah I'm Tobias. Uh, I'm from Berlin, basically DJ, music producer, and um, I don't have a car. That's why I don't listen to music in the car. I would do it because the, the sound in the car is always special and it's intimate, kind of. Um, to be honest, I, I don't listen that much to music at now because I'm doing a lot of music in the studio and when I come home, then I'm like, I, I don't want to listen to anything else. So I, I'm, I'm listening to info radio in the morning uh, to get my news. And um, um, when I come to listening to music, then it's mostly when I walk through the city. So I'm using headphones for that. And um, yeah, sometimes at home, but then just um, chill out music, which is like far away. I'm not like into it and analyzing it. You know, if, if you're producing music, um, you would know then, then you're always like analyzing, you're always active and it's not like the machine should be switched off when I'm at home. So that's why. Hi, I'm uh, Sandra. I'm, I was working uh, for labels as well in the past. Do you hear me? <laughs> Good. And I uh, have now a PR agency for 10 years and uh, doing a little bit of research studies with other universities or have some like um, lecture stuff uh, running. So there was my possibility to do a little bit research uh, as well about like yeah, uh, listening and the new technologies, how, how the behavior is um, yeah, with young people, older people <laughs> and how they behave by listening. I prefer to listen to music as well in the car having a good sound system there <laughs> and um, yeah or via headphones um, I have to listen to a lot of music as well I'm not tired anymore uh, so not yet tired uh, by listening music but I don't produce so <laughs> probably that's it and I for sure um, well obviously love a good sound system in a club which not happens uh, too often that it's a real really good sound system and when I like the music, obviously, then then I can enjoy it absolutely. Do you, uh, do any of you own like a big hi-fi system at home, or is it headphones I mostly? I have I have um, for example from my father. He was a musician, uh, like fifty-year-old Technics uh, speakers. But it's, the rest it's dad's old techniques. Yeah, that, yeah. That's always the same story. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I do have a hi-fi system. Yeah? Too. it's not super expensive, but it's a Cambridge Audio, so it's decent quality. Because uh, this this is something I find interesting is that. We have been listening to MP3 quality files for 15 years now, and a lot of on, on headphones. And in the 70s, if you bought a new house, your house wasn't complete until you had like a sound system in it, yeah. right? Uh, and nowadays we have Bluetooth small speakers, and 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 I I guess it's a little bit because music is a is turning to not a social thing in the home. It's a personal thing when you are on the go, or when you're in a club, or at a concert. So, um, uh, but we see some signs now coming out of the piracy era and into the streaming era. People also want to put some quality around the music itself. Uh, we buy more expensive headphones. Do you own a pair of expensive headphones? Pretty, yeah. pretty good headphones. Uh, at least compared to 10 years ago. Uh, and we see Sennheiser and all the old good brands, they uh, make things that also look good, <laughs> uh, right? Um, but we, uh, we also see an increase in vinyl, a small peak when it comes to sale, but a lot of people are talking about vinyl and uh, people are talking about high resolution files. Um, so do you think 
that we are in the process of putting quality back around the music. I mean, I actually do believe that. I had a, a big private discussion with someone about that yesterday who was a bit more negative about it, but I actually see these indicators for a long time. Uh, m I think it's largely held back because the industry has not created that demand quite well yet. One example is Beats by Dre, terribly sounding headphones, but everyone yes. wants them because they're prestige, you have to have them kind of thing. Um, but the thing really is, like, if, you, if you're talking about the 70s, the 80s, all these big hi-fi systems, somehow the industry created uh, a demand with people. I mean, the fact that people are listening to MP3s right now basically means that they don't really care about the sound quality. So having a hi-fi system wasn't really about having a brilliant sound or whatever, but they created that your house is not complete if you don't have a hi-fi system. And it, it, it was an essential tool to have. And then people, other people took over who told you that it's important to have mobile everywhere, uh, music everywhere you go, or have these wireless speakers everywhere in your house. And that industry was a lot more uh, powerful and persuasive to people, so they created that demand. And, uh, you know, if you, there's many examples in the music industry, like uh, the music industry itself d didn't create solutions for the future, so d people came up with file sharing sites. Uh, this digital distribution didn't happen from physical distributors, it happened from tech companies outside the music industry. And the same thing here, like there is no, if you're talking about smart TVs for instance, uh, there were these USB sticks that you could plug into a TV that made it connectable to the Wi-Fi system. Well, what did the hi-fi industry do? They, they had an iP iPhone or iPod plug at best, but they didn't have a USB stick or anything that would connect it to a Wi-Fi system. So they didn't think far ahead, where would the technology lead to? And I think if they if they realize these trends uh, of like expensive headphones and you know basically no need for compressed music anymore, then they would come up with systems and start to put money into it to create the demand that in 2020 your house is not complete if you don't have a hi-fi system. Yeah. Um, yeah. I would, I would, the service that we have is a lot more expensive for buying CD quality, but the uptake of that product is surprisingly high. So it seems like people want to get back to back into quality. They're even willing to pay for it, uh, which is interesting. But uh, busy, um, since you are the last hand on a lot of albums, how has the last ten years been for you? Has it has the headphone-driven industry and lossy formats uh, has it changed the way your customers are asking for the master to be made? Actually, the customers who's coming to the studio is like um, they be sitting in behind me on the couch, and uh, they listen. They listen to the big systems that I have in the studio, and 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 uh, which is very expensive. And they, but they also they want the masters to be heard on on a laptop speaker. So they, they w so we transfer it via USB stick on the and onto the uh, laptop, and then they 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 go in the kitchen and listen to the masters over there, and if, and they say. This is the this is the place where I uh, consume the music, and um, and most of the of the kids like I do a lot of hip hop music, and most of the kids they they listen to to the music on their uh, uh, iPhones or, or smartphones, and um, so I'm really, yeah I have to invest into better sounding equipment um, to get w when we get to the result of of a bad sounding MP3 sound that that we de uh, that that I deliver a high quality sound before it's uh, compressed in a low uh, quality. So uh, it's changed, it changed. Are, you, are your customers, we're not gonna dive into the loudness war discussion because that's gonna take <laughs> a day or two, uh, but are, the, are your customers still sitting behind you and asking for two dB more and squeeze more, um, push harder? It's actually um, each one teach one. Um, I try to explain them what happens to the music if we if we really get into the loudness war. Um, since we have the master for iTunes format, um, we reduce the loudness to make the MP3 or the AAC file sound better. So if I deliver a zero dB master, which is like for CD master, and turn this into MP3 and into AAC, um, what comes out is a cli oh, is a clipped master. So um, for like massive for iTunes, we, we reduce the loudness, just say one dB. When it's converted into the MP3 sound, then there's no clipping anymore. I, I don't know if you all know this, but 
Uh, I mean, a lot of people think that high quality files is best for jazz and classical and dynamic music, but actually it's the opposite. Uh, the codecs were designed mostly in the 90s, where pe things weren't that loud, and, uh, and they are designed to handle dynamic music. So they, uh, they can see the file and understand where they should shave off information. Yeah. But with uh, hard, dynamically, dynamically compressed uh, piece of music, the codec has no idea where to start right. shaving. So, uh, so actually, Rihanna earns more from getting back to CD quality than uh, some Brahms concert. Mm -hmm. And this is, this is not my opinion, this is physics. <laughs> yes. uh, or that's how the codecs were, were made. So, so it's interesting to see. Uh, uh, we actually see what people listen to, the people that pay more to hear better quality, and it's actually surprisingly a lot of pop. They they listen. <laughs> I thought there would be all the files, old men uh, <laughs> sitting listening to their old Mark Knopfler and Dire Straits albums one more time. But it's uh, it's uh, actually a lot of top twenty stuff going on there. So it's uh, it's interesting, and we also see uh, a lot of people that buy that product also are the vinyl guys. So, oh, um, yeah, what, what, what do you guys think of vinyl? Why are people listening to vinyl? Sandra, I'm sure you have an opinion on why people have started, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean um, as me, as, as a DJ, so I'm f I feel like answering this. Um, um, I think, like, to have a vinyl, I mean, the sound of the vinyl is not just the sound. It's like you come to a club, and if the system is broke, and the player is broke, and the PA is not, not right, then it sounds terrible. If everything is fitted up perfectly, then it, you have a good sound, but this happens like in 2% of all gigs I have. That's why I'm, um, I'm living in the fourth floor, so I changed to um, fast. I was changing to MP3 because I don't want to carry my, my vinyls up uh, to the fourth floor. It's no sense. And um, for me, MP3 um, is there the best format because it's small. I mean, I'm, I'm having like 100 MP3s any week and I'm traveling a lot. And if I download all VA, um, VA, VA files, then it, it's, it's getting like totally annoying. Um, and so it's so easy to come with a stick to the club and play that stuff. DJs um, who use um, vinyls, they um, play a special kind of music. I mean, um, I play more like every kind of dance music, if you say, but if you have like house DJs, um, they have um, music which sounds better if, the, if it has this, this light distortion on it and the light sound of it, and then the tracks you know the tracks sound they uh, how they they made for, um, and like vinyl um, lovers who um, play vinyl at home. I mean, this is my like celebrating, like to to open like a big cover with a big picture to have something um, to feel, to see, to look, and um, you are listening music not like with a like a big playlist of MP3 stuff. You have an album and you really dig into it. It's a it's a ritual. Exactly, yeah. and you and you're changing and okay the next track. I mean, it's a celebration and that feels kind of good for me. I mean, I, I like it, but I'm yeah I'm too lazy. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's it's about an uh, aesthetic uh, thing. Also, so even if it's um, the sound, which is uh, uh, sounds more natural because it's not super like um, clean. It's it's this haptic or physical thing he just said. Um, it's about the the, the cover and um, reminding yourself uh, on the track. Even if you are a DJ, you can find things very easily in your archive. Or about collecting and um, as I was at the university I just told you um, I asked the students how many people of you got um, 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 like a re record player and I was amazed it was like uh, I don't know 30 or 40 percent which is not not bad but for sure they are specialists they are as well in a niche by being musicologist students or something but um, actually yeah the vinyl sales were or the market was never, s never super big but it was constant as uh, until till today, yeah. And this is a, a good thing. And I think it's yeah, it's about people who care about aesthetic sounds, aesthetic feelings, and um, yeah, that it yeah, <coughs> it, it stays. And I just talked to um, Christoph Rote Beverbock von Dapplets and Mastering, and um, yeah, so uh, he said, okay, it's gonna be a bit more crap on vinyl, <laughs> crappy music on vinyl. It was because it was so expensive in the past. It was uh, more selective, like 20 years ago or something. 
and now he has probably to, to master or you know, to cut stuff he probably would never listen to. Um, yeah, but, but there is a need or a feeling, so this is a special product. So it's, it's going to be more and more, again, uh, building products around the sound as well, yeah? Yeah. so that people have a haptic feeling you, you and a connection to you the mentioned artist. The, the, you mentioned the cover as well, being Im an important factor. So w when you check out all the music that you check out during the week, especially you, you two guys that check out a lot of music, where do you find the information you need to understand the piece of music? For me, it's important to read that he mastered the album and some drummer played on the drum. Uh, uh, that's important information for me to understand and interact with the music. But uh, where do you find that information now when you're looking around? Well, I mean, there's certainly a lot of people that you develop trust in. But the most important part for, part for me is that everyone is subjective. You know, when you talk about music, when you read reviews, there's a lot of sites that I read. Uh, but I completely disagree with the way they review albums. But I still, I still read them. I mean, there's specific sites. Ev I even like them, but I just know specific records that I think are amazing. They will diss just because it's them. Uh, and, and so for me, it's very important to have a very um, comprehensive view on various types of music. I listen to, uh, you know, in the past I used to say, everyone who says he listens to everything doesn't have a clue of music and is just saying it because he doesn't n n can't name one artist. But it's actually true for me. I pretty much listen to every type of music, but it's tiny fractions of everything. So I need to check many, many different music sites. Um, there's actually a download site that I really, really like. Uh, it's the only download site in the world that actually has full-length reviews and is really taking the editorial approach very far. And so out of this complex pattern of various sites and sources and friends, uh, you know, I... I but, but, but the concrete... Uh do you want to hear names? The credits and stuff, is that important to you? Yes, yeah. I do read reviews quite yeah. a lot. Yeah, yeah. but the, cre the credits, who played and who mastered, oh. who mixed and who made the cover? And well, who obviously, the you know, obviously names are an easy way to find music because yeah. you do know a certain artist, you do know a certain producer or whatever, and then that's usually a good link to someone else because they might collaborate with someone or they produce an album by someone else. It, it is a link that's very helpful. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, like, there are two sides of um, um, getting new music. It's on the one hand side, it's my DJ music, which is a totally different process to the other kinds of music. I mean, basic pop music, I, it's coming from the radio. If, if I'm switching it on from somewhere, maybe in the drive, no car, and then I switch the title, then I check it out, and then I maybe buy the album. But uh, for my DJ stuff, it's always, it's like, I have one day in a week, which is today, uh, where I get all my promos. I mean, the people are sending me the stuff, and most of the DJs are just going for, like, to play the latest stuff, which is not released yet, and this is like, you know, what you're going for. And if you have like friends and they do you have some, some stuff sent me, so um, this is the way I get like n new music and new artists. And uh, you know, where's a friend from a label or whatever in Poland is like, yeah, we sign up a new artist and we have a new EP coming up, and they're sending the stuff. And from that, I'm kind of a follower of this artist. I mean, like um, websites like Beatport and stuff, they um, they have like I don't know, sixty thousand, sixteen thousand uh, releases, uh, MP3s in a week or something. I mean. Um, if you try to, to uh, listen to everything, you just get crazy. And so they in invented this um, follower system, which you have your, your artist, and you have like um, an email box, which, which, which shows, like an use box, which shows, okay, um, artist X, X was, was, was releasing this week, and then I check it out. So I have like opportunities to like have a filter to have music. And to come back to this vinyl discussion, it was like, the good thing is, I mean, I'm checking all the vinyl um, vinyl shops in the internet um, because it's it's much less vinyls coming out every week, and mostly the vinyls are better than all the MP3s because it's so much easier to release MP3s. So it's a good, it good, good filter. Exactly. Who who has the money um, to release a vinyl is more thinking about the quality of the music. Okay. So you have kind of a filter there, and then I go to the website, I check out our oh, new vinyl here, and then I go to Beatport and buy it um, digitally. Or they just have more money to spend. Yes. <laughs> It, there was a, a piece uh, in New York Times where they wrote that the art of listening is threatened, as a quote. And uh, it seems like everyone has a nostalgic idea of that back in the 70s or 60s, everyone's just sitting around, listening carefully and with full attention all the time uh, to some fantastic system. And that's like the idea of how it was. Uh, 
I'm not so sure if that's the truth. Which, which fantastic <laughs> system you mean? I mean, yeah. I'm coming from yeah. East Germany. Yeah. My dad has a PA system. He was building it on his own. It yeah. was like a fucking crappy RFT uh, mixture between, like, I don't know. Yeah. And we had it last week. I was there, and he was just showing me what's going on. And for us, was this brilliant sound system. And we, <laughs> we got back to it, and we were like, oh, my God, this is <laughs> so fucking shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. uh, I know. I don't know how it was in the 70s because I was I wasn't living there, so um, I'm not sure w what you're talking about at no. this point. No, um, um, and that's the point. I, I don't I don't either agree with that idea, that nostalgic idea. Um, but it might it might not be yeah. it might not be the actual playback devices, but the listening habit was definitely different. I mean, when when I was, uh, it's not just about you know. Usually, people say when you're a teenager, you're emotionally a lot more connected to music than you are at the later stage, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I know all that. But everyone I knew of every age in the 70s and in the 80s uh, was definitely listening to music. I mean, I was laying on the floor in darkness, listening to three albums in a row entirely. wouldn't even think about getting up and skipping to the next track or when whatever. When did you last do that? And that's the thing. Yeah. It rarely ever happens now. It's like maybe when I listen to albums, maybe every 50th time I listen to so something entirely without skipping one track. And, and that's definitely changed. L let me just ask. In the last week, how many of you did listen to a whole album in one go? How Both. many of you did that while doing nothing else? That's impressive. It's Liars. It's, it's, it's usually <laughs> none. Um, and, and that makes me think that somehow, and, and, and I'll give you an example afterwards, but somehow music has become a background thing. And uh, it's something you have on when you work, when you work out, when you do something else. So music is al always the like secondary or third thing that you do. And yesterday I was at a concert and it seemed like people behaved like the artist was background stuff. Everyone was talking during the concert. Do you think the music has become just like a commodity and, and, and something to put next to your social event? Can I say something? Yeah, sure. Interesting. Um, so, yes, this is something I discovered as well. So, um, I was at a party. There were really good acts playing, um, but, uh, and, the, and the audience was pretty young. And um, they, they were dancing to it. And I was just, like, um, uh, waiting for my friends. And so I had a spare time. So I asked <laughs> most of the people around me, do you know who's playing tonight? They said, no fucking clue. They didn't have any idea. And most of them just came because their friends said, come over. And they were even not interested in who was playing. They liked the music, but they didn't ask who was playing to remind themselves later to check it out or something. Also, it's really like, like a soundtrack of the life, of, of your life, but, but not as connected as uh, our generation or the, the, like 20, 30 years ago. It was so important to to, I don't know, um, 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 have, uh, creating your profile by getting adult or something, and now it's a kind of one of the lifestyle part. You know, there are so many other things you can use now to, you know, build your profile or something, and uh, I would say it's um, kind of, yeah, um, and, uh, yeah, also so it's getting lost a bit, but for some it's still important, I think. It's always like that. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, it, it yeah. also naturally, one last thing to add, it naturally comes also with the way we listen to music now, because like we said before, we are listening to a lot more music on the go. Uh, I mean, yes, there was the Walkman and some of us did, but it was not the, the main listening device. It was usually still at a fixed place at home. Uh, and that is also the different part. Usually when you're listening to music on your laptop everywhere, or on your cell phone everywhere, there's a good chance that you might do something else. Mm. You might go to a meeting or you might do this or you focus on thinking about the person that you're just going to meet. Uh, and that is different. So I think the environment that we listen to music everywhere at every time right now has also contributed to the fact that it has become somewhat like a, a secondary yeah. thing you do. So uh, you sit next to amazing speakers all day, listening to music that sounds better and better as you work with it. Uh, a lot of people listen to that music on headphones while on the go. Does, does, do you ever check, your, check the mixes and the masters on headphones? Actually, I'm not a friend of headphones. Um, we have a couple of them in the studio, and, and every time I uh, switch between those different type of headphones, I have like biodynamics, then I, we have also the Beats by Dre. Um, 
then we have the iPhone uh, headphones. And every time I switch to them, it's like I, f I feel bad about uh, listening listening to the music which was created in, in high quality. Mm. And uh, I really enjoy it, listen to music like um, from from far away from the speakers. Yeah. And um, and this is interesting also. There's a whole generation that's coming up now that actually a lot of people have never experienced sound on their body apart from in the club. Yeah. Which is uh, which is completely different. I mean, we we have hairs all over the body to actually feel the and sense the room we are in and and stuff. But in with headphones, I mean, you take a. I have, I have a personal theory as well that parts of the loudness war and why we turn stuff up is also to um, recreate some of that the threshold of feeling stuff on your on your body somehow. Do you have neighbors? I have neighbors and I have kids. That's why headphones are so important part of my life. Yeah, I mean that's that's the thing. I mean, yeah. if my neighbor is listening to music, I'm totally sensitive. I'm I'm, I'm a horrible neighbor yeah. for that because I, I can't stand it if I have like music in my room. And in the end, it's like yeah, you need you need a place where you can enjoy music. I mean, I have the club, which is yeah. I mean, most of the clubs bad sound system. You have a physical, but more it's more pain yeah. to somehow. <laughs> And um, you know that's the problem. Why? I mean, when I was living at home and was listening to, with my dad, who was really like into music, uh, we had a house and we could be loud. It was just my mother which coming in, like, uh, please turn it a bit down, you know. And there was a yeah possibility to do it, but there is no possibility now. I mean, and yeah, we have we don't have time. We're running all the time. We're running to the train station yeah. at home. Where and we have that's why we with headphones all the time. Just to ask you. Who who plays music really loud in their house on speakers? <laughs> cool. <laughs> it, it's just interesting because people are behaving differently uh, now in the headphone era, which is uh, which is cool. Just from a listening perspective, maybe maybe you can explain why that is because I have I have the feeling that. Part of the loudness was as, as well is related to the headphones because, li like you said, maybe you want to recreate that feeling or whatever. But when you're listening to it on a, on a hi-fi system, you don't tend to put it up that loud, really, because it it sounds good, it fills the room or whatever. But somehow, as soon as I put on the headphones, I have a tendency to go full volume. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if there's a technical there, there is actually. A, I'll, I'll let you answer that, but there, it, it's quite funny because of the earlier times of loudness war. Um, the uh, European authorities they decided we need to save the youngsters' ears. Yes. A lot, a, se there are seven million people in Europe with severe hearing uh, loss be because of music listening. So they wanted to do something, and like politicians do, they want we want to have to act now. So what they did with iOS and Android, they claimed that uh, in Europe you have to turn it down by 10 dB. N no, pe we don't know this. It just happened, and which means that you have TD, 10 dB less on your phone, uh, as opposed to an American iOS, which which is louder. So, this next thing that happens is that if I was a record label guy, I would go to him and tell him to squeeze even harder, and destroy the music even more, which is a bizarre uh, reaction to uh, what some politicians did. That was to turn. They tried to turn it down. And then we try to do it in the file to make it louder, uh, the which thing is insane. Is, the thing is um, about the loudness war. Um, we have this uh, mastering guru. <coughs> his name is Bob Katz. Um, he used to be f fighting against uh, the loudness war, and um, and he was like he was like blaming iTunes uh, for, for 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 getting the loudest masters and stuff and and and. Now he's um, on the other side and, and be saying iTunes is uh, helping the music to, to be lower oh, again. Yeah. And um, he, be, he, he tried to pull up a standard again uh, to turn music down. So this is the thing you were saying. When, when an, if an A&R from the record company said, so um, why, why is this music so, uh, so low all of a sudden? Mm. I, I, try to, uh, I try to have the loudest master. So I have to explain him where it coming, where it is coming yeah. from, and, and to tell him music uh, uh, will be sound uh, in, in in lower volume in the, in the future. Yeah. But also, I mean, I I speak to a lot of audiophile people, and they hate everything that's modern. Uh, but also, then I asked him, but do you remember the wall of sound 
in the 70s. It is, is this, do you think hyper-compressed music is also uh, a musical expression? Definitely. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't go to concerts and, uh, and uh, um, tell the sound engineer, turn down the volume because I want to enjoy the, the dynamics and, and, and music and stuff. Yeah. I want to have it loud. Yeah. And uh, this is, for me, the world of sound. Yeah. So uh, I try to be very careful about being uh, instructive about uh, brick-walled sound because it's, it's, a, it's a type of music. Yeah. But then again, it's a shame when I listen to The Killers, for instance, and it's 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 broken. It 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 would have been nice to put it on and gain it up on some speakers, but uh, if I do that, it's it sounds awful, mm -hmm. and you get tired so quickly. Um, but we're not gonna dive into the loudness <laughs> way. Uh, but I I do think it's a sound. I just wanted to add one thing. I mean, there's a reason why the loudness war started, is everyone wanted to be picked out of the masses. You know, when people pre-listen to music or when your track is being played on the radio, you wanted to be the loudest so that people pay attention. Funny thing now is that everything is loud, so you're not going to get attention. And my teachers used to speak very quietly at class when they wanted our attention, because they knew when they were shouting, we'd just talk even louder. So now, if you want attention, just have a lot of dynamic, be very quiet, be the most quiet song in the download store, and people might be like, yeah, what's that? Is there no noise coming? So maybe that's going to be the alternative trend. Definitely. I mean, music is getting getting um, getting lower volume right now. Yeah. <coughs> um, um. It's like I s uh, when I have a, like you say, the killers sounds um, crap. It is like this that the artist actually who likes to sound like this, and and I have to teach them uh, say this is not sounding good. Yeah. We have to get lower a little bit. I, I, I measured and the, f the first couple of bars in, I think it's uh, the human track, mm -hmm. like it is, uh, the first bars in the, in the chorus, clipped 2,000 times. <laughs> it's, it's over digital zero and it's, it's broken, uh, which is a weird thing to do when you've spent a lot of money in the studio. Yeah. Uh, and it could have been very nice to listen to it if it was a little bit lower and you could turn it up. Um, but uh, uh, and this is also quite funny. Uh, I spoke to two uh, PhD students in in Denmark. They're working on uh, a thesis. Uh, the the human body is extremely good at sensing the room, right? Uh, we have small hairs in the back to hear if there's a tiger coming from there or if it's coming from there, so I can run over there. Uh, our body is extremely adapt to sound and, and where things are coming from. And when you start uh, doing lossy compression, n not talking about dynamic compression, but shaving off information to make the file smaller, you are actually getting some phase problems. You are d disturbing the room of the music, so the re reverber reverberation and, uh, uh, and, and the room sense is a little bit ruined. And what they have measured is that um, when people listen to lossy music in headphones, especially music they know well from before, their brain, when they do brain scans of people, it looks like they have migraine. It looks like they are ill. So, uh, so uh, actually, our CPU, our processor, is working really hard to reconstruct music in the head that's been compressed. So, so it's uh, uh, when you listen a lot on headphones, do you get tired? Yeah. Yes, definitely. Uh, when I when I read this, I read the same. I mean, it was for me, it was like, what the fuck? It yeah. was like this is the argument why I move over to um, uncompressed files. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's a it's a big it's a only big reason. I mean, I, I I wrote like kind of an exam about like MP3 and F FLAC. So and I I was listening to tons of music and compared it to each other and I found out that all the dynamic music like classical stuff jazz stuff it's really like you you don't have the you don't have the room and you, it's missing a lot but for pop music i was always like yeah, okay basically it sounds the same so mm. um, but when i saw this picture of the brain like it was like oh shit what yeah. what, what do i do to me and yeah i I, th I think we are all getting tired listening to mp3 stuff yeah. and so i i think we'll just round up this uh, this chat about music uh, and I'll just ask you to close. If there's anything about the way you're listening to music <coughs> that you would change, if, if you 
if you dream, I, I personally, I dream about setting aside more time to listen to music and do nothing else and enjoy it more. But I have music in the background a lot. Is, is there uh, stuff that you would want to change about where and how and what type of music that you interact with? No, actually, we go with the times. It's like when back in the days we were sitting on, on at the radio, was copying from, from radio and put us on tape and then walk around with Walkman. Nowadays, uh, we, have, we have the MP3 player started with the iPods and uh, ended up in an iPhone or in a smartphone. Um, I guess it will change um, in a few years. Like um, now we're going back to vinyl again. Then we are listening to... Um, um, do, do you listen to a lot of vinyl? Actually, yes. Yeah. I, have, I have a lot of vinyls yeah. at, at the studio. Plus, I have to, uh, I have to uh, master a lot of stuff for, for vinyl. And um, I think some, some is getting back. And, uh, and we're now creating new ways to listen to music. And, um, and let's see what, they, what the guys at the, at the IFA uh, will bring on, on the spot. Well, you know, similar to you, my plan is to create more time to actually listen to music. I put my sound system in a separate room so I don't disturb my wife and my kids with the weird stuff that I'm listening to. Uh, and I'm actually just about to find, somehow make the time and compromise something else uh, to listen to more music in, in one go, entire album maybe once a day or, I don't know, a couple of times a week or something. I'm hoping for that. And then I hope that some people of this industry actually have enough of an interest in hi-fi music again so that they help to promote the idea because there are s short indicators as we said but it needs a push and that push can only come from from the industry i like the idea of wimp uh, you know it's a super niche thing but when i was still working at beatport for instance uh, beatport offers uh, wafi since the beginning and it was my idea to basically take a stance and say why do we sell compressed files at all there is really no need anymore just let's make compressed files and uncompressed files for the same price. Just boom, make it an announcement. Well, unfortunately, Beatport, as you know, makes a lot of money with WAV files. <laughs> so I was always against this. My, uh, everyone was always against my idea. But I would have really liked this stance for, from such a dominant market leader to say, you know what? It sounds the same. You make the choice. You can have full quality for the same price. And I hope that some people are coming up with such ideas, are taking the stance. The industry, like I said before, hi-fi systems, etc., etc. they're innovative. Uh, they're creating systems that allow to be connected to the future, uh, are following the user demands. Um, but I think there's a good chance that this is going to happen, and I have high hopes that it will. Do you think the album will survive this era? The concept of the album? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So I it's not all going to be playlists? No, I mean, uh, still, you know, to, to be honest, most of the times when I hear people talk about music, they talk about albums. Uh, most of the times when people go on the road, I mean, dance music is a very, very specific type. It has always been about tracks, really. Not so much about a record. It was always about this track or this remix or whatever. But in other forms of music, the album has always been the main thing. And, you know, I'm personally listening to a lot of indie music, rock music, etc. And there, a, a band still needs an album to go on tour. So even people who go to that tour, they remember that album because it was the reason why the band went on tour. And so I, I don't think there's the format is dying. It, it's, it's changed over the years, but I don't see the album go away anytime soon. Okay, also I, I wish myself a new car because it's getting louder and louder as it becomes older and older. <laughs> um, so that uh, the sound is better in the car again. Um, my speakers at home are pretty well, but I need a new system, a new high fi system, that's true. Um, I just read an article, it's about like, um, I don't know, the illusion as well of, also creating the illusion of uh, listening to sound. And um, they were talking about um, that we listen nearly kind of like bats, bats, like flittermore mouse. <laughs> That was interesting, and they were talking about not a four-point system, but uh, what comes after that, that it's 16 speakers, and out of every speaker there are other tendency and frequency, so that it's like a wave also in the room. So this is even another probably or a interesting sound adventure, and yeah. I, I would be curious what, what, what this sounds like. <laughs> I mean, the, the, we've probably all experienced surround sound in a yeah. cinema or something. Do people have surround sound at home? 
Who has the surround sound system at home? Yeah, I bought a really crap one in the early 90s. And I think a lot of people bought really bad surround sound. And it never caught on because it's crap. But it's actually a quite amazing experience. But it's also quite ex expensive uh, uh, experience. To, I to wish to myself get. like 16 years to enjoy it. For yeah. You know? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know. I wish my I wish, but the, the the important thing is like I wish myself that the people stop listening to Dr. Dre headphones, and the people don't care about like style and stuff and more like quality of music. But this is a vision which never comes true. I mean, the the industry is not looking for quality. I mean, I never felt that. And for like um, this discussion about Beatport and like um, sell <coughs> sell the files for the same price. It's like for DJ music, I still, in my opinion, it's okay to play MP3s because the club situation is different. And I don't think that all for, for that loudness. I mean, we had the test like with 10 DJs and we were playing um, basic files uncompressed we were playing MP3s. And there was no one, there was no one who found out which one was this or that because the the, situ the listening situation is so different. I mean, you can you can you can argue against it. I'm totally open. I'm still not sure, and um, I'm sure like the test where they were watching the brain while listening to MP3 stuff, it would have not the same uh, the same results uh, in the club, I guess. Uh, how how low quality do you, can you go Basically. in the club? Low, uh, all the time, like best quality, best yeah. quality of MP3s. Yeah, sure. I mean, this is this is important. You cannot go with like 128. Like no. this is like exactly. Crappy. But I mean, people ask me, is like, can, can I hear the difference? And yeah. I tell you, you, you will feel the difference if you are able to pick out what's different or if it matters to you. I cannot, I cannot instruct you to to have a, to do that. But there is a difference. There is a lot more information hitting your ears. And and uh, if you look at the other way down, I mean, at one point, if you reduce the quality, if you go down to MP3 like 128. At one point, your foot stops tapping, yes. just because, and the goosebumps disappear because the the, the, the little touch of magic is gone. Um, I I do agree. You have to go quite far down before that starts happening, but but the, there is a difference also on the way up. Well, the difficulty really is that it's so complex, and you can't really say an MP3 always sounds voice or whatever because there's so many types of music so many types of different ways yeah. to create an mp3 even you know you can do it very well you can do it very crappy so there's many sources but the main fact for me is there's no reason for it anymore the mp3 was created because there was a limited data transfer possibility storage was very difficult but we don't have any of these problems today no. so i don't even want to go into the argument of saying like you know will you hear the difference or whatever there is simply no need for it Really, I mean, even it's USB time. sticks it's are it is so it is big time. Now. When I'm sitting in the hotel, like checking, um, th this is like my situation every week. I'm coming to the hotel on Friday because I didn't have time to check all my promo stuff. If the people were sending me um, um, uncompressed files, I would have like 10 new tracks. Otherwise, now I have like 30 or 40 tracks. It's, I mean, it's not that that we have everywhere the best internet so that we can have uncompressed files. It's not like this. Go to Free Design. Go to my place. It's so fucking slow. I even at home for me is a problem. Just in the studio, if you did a DSL, there is no problem. I would ever choose like uh, um, uncompressed files. But most of the places, and even like not in, in Germany, it's kind of good. But if you go to other countries, it's it's horrible. I mean, I was in Croatia. Uh, there was even uh, really hard to get an MP3 in a good quality. Mm -hmm. I mean, in like 10 years, maybe, if we have better better streaming resources, then it would be like perfect. But I don't feel that we are at this point right now. Oh, but uh, but th th the thing is, do we, rem do we remember to turn it up again when you can? I mean, right now I'm walking from my house to the metro in Oslo and I can offline an album in the background while I'm streaming another full quality album on, on the mobile. And, and still I have plenty of headroom to be on Facebook at the same time. So yeah, and, and, and you see, I mean, we also have 70% of, of all music revenue is streaming. So I mean, it does move with the technology uh, as well. Do you think it will? Do you think people will remember to? We we certainly forgot we had the technology like five years ago to do this, but mm. it's happening now. Do you think you will remember to turn the quality up again? Most definitely. Yeah. yeah. I see it. Uh, I, I had a, I had a, um, last week. I, bec um, I became an email from uh, Dropbox, which says. Uh, you have now one terabyte yeah. for 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 the same price for the same price, yeah. and uh, I was like, cool. So why did I um, just bought uh, web space for like uh, 15 euros a month yeah. 
for 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 my for my internet server for my for for the music which I send to my to my customers. So now I have one terabyte. Yeah. So it 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 varies. It and varies. it will change your behavior as well. Yes. So I I hope I would I will end on this note that I hope people remember to turn the quality <laughs> up again. Yeah. When they can. Yeah. It, it needs a reminder every every so often. Good. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.